Hello again, and welcome to another Real Biz, the London edition. It's been a huge week for international news. Greece is staying in the euro for now. World powers agreed to a nuclear deal with Iran, and China's stock market is rallying for now after a fierce 30% sell-off. Meantime, the Twitter rumor heard round the world. Shares of Twitter surged this week after a fake Bloomberg article claimed the social media company was getting bought for $31 billion. I don't know what was scarier, the fact that $31 billion was a believable price tag or that a hoax could move markets so much. Here in London this week, we also caught up with one of Britain's most brilliant females. We're calling her the love doctor, Hannah Fry. She is a trained mathematician and theoretical physicist with a PhD in fluid dynamics. And now she's researching a relatively new area of science, social and economic complex systems. Translation, she's using the most logical, rational approach, math, to understand what might be our most irrational emotion, love. And in her new book, The Mathematics of Love, she's turning the idea of romance on its head. Take a listen to the interview. The Mathematics of Love, do you believe that math can help people find love? I do think that taking a mathematical perspective of things and assess, especially looking at sort of the data and the patterns in, in, that we leave behind us in our love lives, I do think that that can give us some fresh and interesting insights into love. How about finding the one? You can prove mathematically that your best strategy is to uh, spend 37% of your dating life, of your dating time, uh, rejecting everybody as serious marriage material. Okay. Uh, and then pick the next person who comes along that's better than everybody that you've so seen So almost half of your dating life. Yeah, just almost over a half. third. Just over a just third. Just over a third yeah. of your dating life. Yeah. All those people see ya in the early <laughs> stages. So don't think seriously about having a long-term relationship with them. But yeah. What was the biggest complaint people <laughs> online had to say about this? Well, so, okay, for starters, this method does come with risks, right? It doesn't work every single time. Um, you could say goodbye to the one. Oh, absolutely. Or somebody and absolutely. regret it for yeah, the rest they could of your come life. In your, uh, the best person could come in your first 37% window. Um, if you started dating when you were 15 and ideally wanted to be settled down by the time you're 35, then you have roughly until your 22nd birthday to sort of play the field and get a feeling for what's out there. And the big objection online was um, from, <laughs> from people who were uh, under 22 who uh, sort of accused me <laughs> of suggesting they dumped their partners, which I wasn't <laughs> doing. I thought, it was, I thought it was very clear that this, is a, this really is an abstraction from reality. But one, I still think that gives you sort of a bit of insight into the things that people naturally do anyway, because a lot of us do spend some time in our late teens and early 20s just getting to know ourselves, getting to know what's available to us. Um, yeah, and getting kind of a feel for the marketplace almost. And how do you use math to keep from getting a divorce? Ah, so this is my absolute favorite example of all. Um, and it comes from uh, an American study by psychologist John Gottman and um, a collaboration he did with James Murray and, uh, and their team of students at the time. And what they did is over a number of years, uh, they uh, filmed couples having an argument, essentially couples in long-term relationships. Couples having, having arguments yeah, on film. It wasn't reality TV. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, although I think you'd probably get <laughs> a lot of data from looking at reality TV. Um, but what they did is they worked out a way to score everything that happened in that conversation as either positive or negative. Um, now just with those scores they were able to uh, predict whether or not a particular couple would get divorced with a 90% accuracy, right? which is astonishing. astonishing 90% yeah. accuracy based on those arguments. Based on, yeah, scoring it as positive or negative. But for me, the thing that I like the most is that they were also able to write down a series of equations which explained how an argument between a couple would evolve over time. Hmm. Um, and in particular, they found uh, certain things in, in writing down these equations, they found the trigger points of when one part uh, sparks a really negative reaction in, in, their, in their spouse um, or in their partner. Um, something called the negativity threshold, they called it, which is basically how annoying one person has to be before they, you know, they really cause a They big, push it over big, the edge. Yeah, exactly. The team found that uh, the couples who do really well are the ones with a really low threshold for negativity. They so, yell it out or talk it out yeah, or whatever it is early like a, on. Yeah, as soon as something becomes an issue, they bring it up 
and they're constantly resolving and repairing the tiny issues in their relationship. Doesn't build up. Exactly, never becomes a big deal when it doesn't need to be. You go through in your TED Talk some very specific things that people can use math, <laughs> apply math to, to help them find love, and one of them is online dating. Yeah, of course. So this comes from um, OkCupid. Okay it was founded by a group of mathematicians, um, and they deliberately put in lots of bits into their website, which essentially allow them to kind of experiment um, on their customers in a totally safe and, and you know, okay way. <laughs> so how about for the people who are trying to create that perfect profile, mm. what do they do? What should they do? Well, so what you shouldn't do is pick the picture which minimizes anything that you deem to be unattractive. So a classic example of this is um, people who are perhaps a bit overweight, deliberately choosing a very cropped photo, or people hiding their tattoos or piercings, um, anything that's kind of a bit quirky and different. Uh, but actually, that's the opposite of what you should do. What you should do is play up to whatever it is that makes you different, even if you think some people will find it unattractive. Show your uniqueness, Absolutely. whatever that uniqueness yeah. is. Yeah. It's so interesting because when I watched your TED Talk, I thought a lot about business, and mm. a lot of people are starting companies, a lot of our real biz viewers are startups, and they're trying to think about how this, this whole personal interplay works into and management works yeah, into a business and I think there's so many takeaways here. That to me is a big one. Yeah. Have the conversations, the tough conversations Absolutely. early on as opposed to letting them build and then essentially undermine the foundation of whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, the, 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 the sort of top line, if you like, from the Gottman study is that you really should communicate honestly, openly, and as positively as possible. And I think that's a rule that applies across the board. And it's mathematically proven now. Absolutely. We like that. Exactly. What's the probability of meeting the love of your life at a party? <laughs> Peter Bacchus worked this out. He said there were 26 women in the world for him, which gives him a 1 in 300,000 chance of bumping into any one of the women in, in a particular night. How about online? Uh, better. <laughs> at a bar? <laughs> mm, worse. Blind date? <laughs> Good, I met my husband on a blind date. Set up by friends. Oh, that's very good, yeah. Similar life goals, etc. yeah, good. What's smarter, speed dating or arranged marriage? Oh, actually, there's lots of evidence to say that arranged marriages uh, end up with people who are very satisfied. It's a different set of rules, different set of expectations. Um, so yeah, yeah, here's to families supporting couples. Here's to arranged marriage. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> Family supporting couples, I think, is the <laughs> Hannah, thank you so much. Thank really you great much. speaking with you. Good. Now, before you go scrambling to change that profile pic on some dating website, stay with us because we hear that watching Real Biz can and will improve your life. Mathematicians are working round the clock right now to prove it. So let's check out our Real Biz rundown, the five things you need to know for the week ahead. And starting us off at number five, Big changes to Snapchat, the app now valued at a cool $16 billion, take that Facebook, introducing a new layout. Did you notice? Discover, the section where you can see news from some of your favorite outlets, now at the top of the Stories home screen. It's a smart move by Snapchat, which can now use the changes to collect more ad money and get its 100 million daily users even more engaged. I'm one of those Snapchat users, by the way, and I update my stories all the time. Add me. Speaking of updates, coming in at number four, the new Windows update. Windows 10 set to be released July 29th, and we know it'll be free for the first year if you have Windows 7, 8.1, or Windows 8.1 phone. Now, if you haven't already, you are going to start seeing pop-up messages on your computer prompting you to reserve an upgrade. It's free, keep that in mind. Also keep in mind and keep your eyes peeled for the hashtag upgrade your world. That is part of Microsoft's big push to get everyone on board because of course, Windows is still Microsoft's bread and butter. And while we've got you thinking about food, let's talk McDonald's. Things over the last few years haven't been so hot at the Golden Arches. In April, they announced they'd be shutting 700 McDonald's restaurants around the world, making this the first year the number of U.S. stores has shrunk since 1970. And whenever a company is in peril, you can always count on activist investors to swoop in with a plan. Enter Nelson Peltz of Tryon Fund Management and Bill Ackman of Pershing Square. Neither actually own the company, but they did share their thoughts at a conference on Mickey D's. 
and their ideas for the Mickey D's makeover? Well, they're calling for a cultural 180, which they both say will take time and an iron stomach, which might be what McDonald's is getting at with the reintroduction of the McLobster, a lobster roll for $7.99, back on select Mickey D's menus this week after a 40-year hiatus. All we can say, we can't wait to read the food blogger reviews. Coming in at number two, pain at the California pump. Some stations in the Golden State now selling gas for more than $5 a gallon. Experts predicting the daily double-digit increases could continue a few more days. And meantime, the rest of the country is seeing averages closer to 280. So why are Californians paying double? Well, maintenance at a number of California refineries has created a temporary supply shortage in the region. The good news, it is temporary and prices nationally could even drop back to $2 by year end, so you can start planning those road trips now. And finally, our number one story, a way to get some real biz R&R this weekend, coloring books. No, they are not just for kids. Adult coloring books are apparently all the rage. In fact, eight of the top 20 best sellers on Amazon this week, adult coloring books. Call them stress relievers, Art therapy, a way to unplug, companies like Dover Publications are cashing in on the Zen trend, selling more than 3 million copies of adult coloring books. And to go along with those coloring books, coloring clubs, coloring book contests, and pictures of adults coloring all over social media. I haven't yet invested in a book, but I did draw this lovely hand turkey. <laughs> and if you're looking to unwind this weekend, might I recommend coloring your way to calm. You have my full permission to color outside the lines. But before we go, two Real Biz rock stars this week, Devin Still of the Cincinnati Bengals and his five-year-old daughter, Leah, who is battling cancer. It was an emotional Devin Still taking the stage at the ESPYs Wednesday night to accept the Jimmy V Perseverance Award on behalf of Leah, telling the audience that he and his daughter made a pact to never give up. Never, 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 never give up. That is one of my very favorite Winston Churchill quotes. And it's a reminder to all of us at Real Biz to remember the most important things in life and to keep up the fight. We hope you have a wonderful weekend and a great week ahead. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, cheers. <laughs>